Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Can I make it 7.30? So we'll start. Um, can I remind people that we're still in COVID rules, so unless you're speaking, um, whilst that you should have your masks on, please. Uh, and we need to keep the doors and windows of the, of the chamber open, so I apologise. It's raining and it's not as nice outside as it was. Um, but unfortunately, these are the rules at the moment until we reach uh, the 19th. Uh, can I start with item one, apologies for absence? Are there any apologies? None taken. Item two, declarations of interest. Councillors, do any of you wish to declare any interest? I'm seeing no hands, so we'll take no declarations. Item three, the minutes of the previous meeting. I have your permission to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Does that agree? <coughs> Um, item four, matters arising. Does anyone have any matters arising from the previous minute meeting to raise? No one indicated. Item five, written questions from the public. I believe we have one. Adam? Mr. Cook? Water vapor. Hello, thank you. Um, I'm a resident and stakeholder of the land where the proposed stalk crossing on the corner to Elizabeth, Elizabeth Way, Edinburgh Way, I'm sorry, will take place. On the 11th of 6th, 21, I showed Mr Hardware and my ward councillor, Mr Matthew Saggers, some of my many concerns. I showed you the poor state of the existing surface water crossing, sorry, the storm uh, drainage, where it enters the River Stalt at River Way and the associated stench and I recall that you took photographic evidence. I also showed you the serious flood damage in the form of uprooted trees and the underboring to the ex existing Latin mill, all of which has occurred since the recent widening of, this, of Edinburgh Way and, uh, and the other building schemes to the east of Harlow. All of this poses a risk to the existing flood defence defences that were installed at great expense to Harlow Council, circular 2002 to 2003. This was when the nearby weir was compromised by flooding and it caused a partial collapse of the footpath to the south of the Stalk River and a threat to Mead Park Industrial Estate. Recently, you gave a statement on behalf of the leadership of the council to yourharlow.com stating that you would raise my objections with the relevant authorities and the stakeholders. However, many councillors, including those with relevant portfolios and our own MP, have indicated that they will refer all of my questions and concerns to you. I'm concerned that the relevant authorities, such as the Highways Authority, they might not have been contacted it is essential to investigate whether these schemes have caused an increase of surface water discharging into the river stalt. This will seriously affect the planning decision of the central and eastern proposed river stalt crossing. Please could you show me that you, you have consulted in full with the council and update me on the progress in relation to my concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Waterbaker. Now, I'm going to turn to Councillor Harbour to whom you address your question and give him the chance to either read his quest, read his answer to your or take his read. Um, and then you'll be invited back at the end of that to ask a supplementary question. You, you can choose to stay standing there or sit back down and ask Councillor Harbour his answer. Councillor Harbour. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I will agree. My answer and I apologise to everybody. Uh, this is going to be rather long. Uh, I thought it was important to give some, some background. Um, to the answer. So thank you, uh, Mr. Warren Baker, for your question. Um, uh, the Gilson development and its associated transport infrastructure has been the subject of significant debate and consultation over many years, and a project we have inherited, sorry, we have inherited from the previous Labour administration. The development is enshrined in the East Hertfordshire Local Plan, which was adopted in 2018 following public consultation and an independent examination which found the plan to be sound. Equally, the principle of the river crossings to support the development at Gilson is also enshrined in the Harlow Local Development Plan, which was also consulted upon in this, and was adopted in December 2020 by the previous administration, also following 
independent examination by a planning inspector. Harlow Council is supportive of the development of new housing to the north of Harlow at Kinston has been vital to meet the future needs of the town and the surrounding area. It is vital to ensure that appropriate levels of infrastructure are provided to support this development and the traffic model has demonstrated that the Eastern Stork Crossing is required to enable this. Equally, we have to balance the increasing need for new housing with impacts on the environment. Climate change and global warming is a major issue facing humanity and we need to minimise the impact on it. Conversely, there has been a housing shortage in the UK for many, many years. It is one of the reasons why house prices are so high and why it is difficult for many, in particular the younger generations, to get on the housing ladder. It is a very difficult balance to find. To answer Mr Warnerbaker's question, I can confirm the highways authorities and the lead local flood authorities have been engaged and provided comments on the application for the Eastern Stork Crossing. The proposal includes a series of new drainage infrastructure which will deal with surface water arising from the new road. Note that the bridge is elevated the river, riverway location over existing features. Surface water runoff from the new highway will be stored beneath the highway surface and systems designed to accommodate flows that may arise from a 1 in 30 year storm event. Towards Riverway, where the urban area is more constrained, the new roundabout surface water will be attenuated and treated by a conveyance, sorry, conveyance and a separator to remove fine pollutants, particles and oils before just discharging to the river storm. All drainage suit uh, infrastructure must meet the same level of surface water runoff as a greenfield or undeveloped site. The assessments indicate that there will be no impact on surface water flooding arising from the development. In terms of preventing flood risk and integrating sustainable drainage through design, the Eastern Stork Crossing proposals meet the requirements of the Environment Agency and the lead local flood authorities. The drainage strategy has been agreed in principle at this stage, and subsequent engineering design stages will refine details about the proposed attenuation features, which will be controlled by a series of conditions attached to any planning approval. The Highways Authority has also confirmed to me that approval of these fine deta final details will be required before the Section 278 road adoption process can be completed. I am therefore satisfied that there is sufficient engagement from the relevant authorities in relation to this proposal. Stakeholders for the Restore Crossing, which have and will continue to be engaged as the Gilson Development Pro progresses, include Natural England, the Environment Agency, the Highways Agency, lead local flood authorities, highways authorities, ecology departments, archaeology departments, mineral and waste authorities of both county councils, Parks and Middlesex Wildlife Trust, Essex Wildlife Trust, the Canal and River Trust, Network Rail, Greater Anglia, and the National Air Drone and Safeguarding Team at Stanstead Airport. Connectivity via the sport crossings is integral to our once in a lifetime opportunity to attract the transforma transformative investment and growth that Harlow needs in order to fulfil our significant potential. Sir Frederick Gibbard described Harlow as an organism which go on changing and being rebuilt as the needs of the people alter. And the garden town and associated infrastructure is the beginning of that new chapter. There is no evidence. Sorry, there is no evidence to link the river flooding with the expansion of Edinburgh Way. These may be nothing more than a coincidence. There are a number of drainage channels and potential sources of increased flow into the river street over the last few years, when there have also been, and probably the actual cause, a number of very high rainfall incidents. The river catchment took for the river stalk is huge, and most of the river stalk navigation comprises hard, reinforced packages as it functions as a navigable waterway. There are few parts of the river where the banks are not reinforced and therefore vulnerable to erosion. The Latin Island section is one such location where the banks are not reinforced in all locations as the river splits into to provide a relief flow of the water around the rock. Harlow Council is aware of the erosion damage 
happily mentioned by Mr. Warren Baker, I can confirm that the Council's environmental team is currently in discussion with the Environment Agency and the Canal Movers Trust to agree a program of repairs to this part of the river. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor uh, Mr. Warren Baker, do you have a supplementary question for us? I do. Please. Um, it's a little bit confusing because obviously that's a long explanation, but I will try to contain it into one short question. Um, in regard to the fact that I showed Councillor Sagers where the river had already broke its banks, which you've just acknowledged um, is the case, um, and you did briefly mention the 30 year flood event, which I can confirm is inaccurate because on that 30 year flood event, it shows my land unaffected by flood water. I have confirmed with Mr. Sagas and showed him on my island that the river was flooded to a depth of almost two feet last year. This was not after continued snow, the melt, which, normally, which is when you normally get flooding, but this was groundwater discharging directly into the river stalks. So this is a very, very serious concern of mine. I contacted Canal River Trust um, and then the planning department got back to me and they said they were very concerned and they would not tolerate another drop of water being discharged this into the right. store. So my can question is, question, so my question is, have you raised the issue with Canal River Trust? Because they have told me at this stage, the developers have not contacted or, or ob obliged their um, their obligation to uphold the law of you know, putting through regulations. That's my question to you. Simply, okay. are you aware that Canal River Trust have not been informed of their statutory duties from the developer if any water is discharged into the river stores? Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Um, Councillor Hartwick. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Canal River Trust have been consulted and have provided comments. Services that are provided by this district council. 
And my question is to the uh, to the portfolio of the community. I'm sure he would be happy to comment and then make the other solution. Councillor Charles. Chair, uh, thank you. This authority has made it clear over the last 15 months across administrations that it would take a cautious approach to dealing with this pandemic. Families in this town have endured tragedy, but I have been heartened by the response of volunteers, individual community leaders to respond to that challenge. The purpose of the community resilience strategy is to build on the momentum that we saw through the council's actions, volunteers, key workers, and our health and care workers in this town to respond to that challenge. And as part of that, we will look at the post-COVID recovery when we get to that point. As, the, uh, as Councillor Edwards has pointed out, the government is moving along its roadmap as part of the uh, process to respond to the coronavirus. This council will take a cautious approach and listen to the health professionals in this town. Co uh, co co attached to the community resilience strategy is actually the community wellbeing strategy that we will be working with health and care professionals to co-create so that there is a holistic approach to dealing with the coronavirus. We're certainly not out of the woods yet. I'm under no illusions about that, and nor is this authority, but we will work in partnership community leaders, volunteers, key workers and health and care professionals to continue to respond to this awful requirement. Councillor Edwards, can I also add that although you, you've asked this question on the floor of work under the community engagement, um, the council continues to have a joint COVID working group uh, and it was a real shame not to see everyone there. I know there were people in Germany match was particularly of interest to a number of members, but it was a shame that that wasn't fully attended um, the other night. Um, and I also know you're, you're going to be coming to um, joint briefings that have been set up for the administration and opposition with the CCG and the um, Hospital Trust. Um, I'm happy to report back to the whole chamber um, that the CCG feel they're making real inroads into vaccinations um, and that the Hospital Trust were able to tell us that um, they were not suffering dramatically from uh, COVID cases that have been recently um, and they do feel that they have what they need to cope Crisis. Of course, you will know that uh, Councillor Spence from Essex um, is in regular contact each week with the Leader of the Council, um, as he was with the Port former Leader of the Council, um, to update us on the whole of the Essex and White position. Um, and that the Chief Executive sits on the Essex and White Board um, with Chief other Chief Executives, with the County, um, with Dr. Doherty, um, and with um, senior members of the Police and Fire Service to make sure that the whole community of Essex can respond to the pandemic should there be a further uptick in cases. Now, I, I study stats myself, um, I, you know, I deal with stats for a living, and your view that it may be exponential over the following four, five, six weeks may not be true. There is some evidence already that the peak is starting to, to, to level off. Um, but as Councillor Charles said, the authority stands ready to work across party and with other districts and county authorities and with the healthcare system um, to deal with that. Thank you. Um, did you. Did you have a further question? <coughs> Comment. <coughs> Comments in the sense yeah, that yeah. I find it interesting that you were saying that the view is that it's like to sort of, really sort of level off, given that the government uh, spokesman today was saying that they anticipated that the, uh, that the exponential rise that we're seeing at the moment is likely to continue at least until uh, mid August. So um, I apologise, Councillor Edwards. I wasn't able to watch the briefing today. I was still at work and then came straight to this meeting, so I may have missed some same information today. But certainly, when the Health Trust and the CCG briefed us last week, they were happy that things were going in the right direction in the Another question, or a related question. I understand that there's now a walking facility at the local leisure centre. I just wonder whether my question is. is can the council do any more to advertise that in terms of, with the exception of the stuff that's online, there doesn't appear to be anything in the way of notices up within the town centre or anywhere else to be saying that that will be considered is available. Thank you, Councillor. This is, uh, I'm sure Councillor Charles would be happy to deal with that, but it was one of the things that we covered last week in uh, the meeting with the CCG and the um, uh, 
uh, and then also some briefing answers and questions. Just to follow that, Chair, the other priority for us, of course, and Councillor Johnson has focused on this, is the vaccination run, particularly to younger elements of the adult population. That will be our focus, and we are already working with Chris on the hospital of West Essex CCG to understand where we can put potentially a vaccination bus into local areas as well. So we've reinforced that message for the vaccination uh, program. It's absolutely crucial as we enter into, enter into the next six months. And Councillor Edwards, just to follow up on the other half of your question about um, what advertising there is. Um, we did push the um, CCG that there are a number of people who are not online um, and to distribute um, flyers, which they've been doing. We offered support with our, our community safety team um, to help get those flyers out around the town centre, into shops and in places where um, people who, you know, will, will see them regularly. So, um, but please, I would urge all councillors present, all officers present, and indeed the local media to spread the word about the um, drop-in vaccinations. It's really important that we get as many people vaccinated as possible. Are there any other questions on the forward work? Councillor Doe. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Chair. I've got two questions. The first one is item 1012872, which is on page 13, which is my favourite subject against my favourite Cabinet member for regeneration, which is the uh, town plan draft for consultation. I was wondering whether or not the Cabinet member could um, inform us of who is responsible for the drafting of this consultation document, who's monitoring that, what engagement is there going to be about councillors over this? Equally, when will we be expecting the outcome or an update? And can we be assured that as this is a time plan draft for consultation, it will include the comments that have been made from the speaker about the stalked crossing? And then I have a second uh, separate item. The second question, I think you said two, and that was about six in no, no, well, no, it was, it was, it was one work plan issue, but a clarification on the process. Okay, thank you. So um, I think we'll go to Councillor Swords. I think there were six different questions there, so yeah, you may want to take by and, and ask Councillor Durkin to clarify you didn't write more there. Yeah, I, I do apologise. Uh, I may have given it my list and asked him again. Um, you, you asked about who will be drafting this and whether we're monitoring that. It's a joint piece of work between uh, the regeneration team and the planning team, so uh, it's, it's being it would, you know, it's being monitored by um, both myself and Councillor Hartwell. Uh, we also have a working group on the matter. Uh, there is a working group meeting coming up. Give me a second. I can't remember the date off the top of my head, uh, but it's in the, in the next couple of weeks, uh, which are, there will be a, obviously a significant update and a chance for further member engagement. Um, as I said to you previously, uh, we'll, we'll certainly we, we believe we're on on the uh, on the, the time frame that we originally set out, and that we will be going to consultation in September, uh, as as I first uh, said said at the last meeting. So forgive me if I missed any of your questions, but in short, we believe we're on track. We think it's going to be a great town plan. Uh, that's going to encompass all the very exciting things that are happening in the town, all the incredible government investments that are coming in. Uh, and uh, I hope I'm flattered if that reflects on that for a Yes, uh, yes uh, sorry, the, the response sounds like what you're doing is you're selling uh, an idea, whereas actually I thought the principle of consultation was actually active uh, engagement and active uh, listening. Uh, you didn't mention the issue about stalk crossing and will the many thousands of people who have raised these concerns, will that afford them the opportunity uh, to um, uh, take part in, in that particular uh, uh, pr uh, procedure? And then I'll come Thank on to the you. second. Yes. Thank you, Councillor I think we all acknowledge that it's very important to um, consult properly and to tell the truth about what we're doing so that the residents get the true picture of what's happening in the town. That's the source. Yeah, thank, thanks for um, following that up. Consultation, uh, I couldn't agree more, it's a, uh, the, the most important part of this whole piece of work. Uh, and I'm pleased that you're now on board with the idea of consultation, seeing that the previous consultation that your administration did. Uh, on the stall crossing, as you well know, the planning application hasn't yet come to this authority, and when it does, uh, it, it will be uh, looked at in, in due course, but this uh, the town plan will, will look at all aspects of infrastructure. 
uh, that we envisage are both needed or already in train uh, for the future uh, at no right tomorrow. Thank you. Councillor Durkin, you have a second question? Uh, yes, if I may, which is the next one down, which is 10, 12, 484, again on page 13. It's the use of compulsory purchase order to advance the development of Harlow and Gilston Garden Town. My eyes were drawn because this is my ward, uh, Little Pardon and Hare Street, and I was wondering whether or not the Cabinet member uh, could describe to me uh, what land is planned to be purchased uh, in the Little Pardon and Hare Street area, please. Thank you very much, Councillor Duffin. I'll look at Councillor Harvey at the moment. Councillor Duffin, you have the and there are several parcels of land um, and I think I can actually send you a plan so you can see which land is to be the most Thank you, Councillor Hartley. So, sorry, can I just confirm because my hearing is in great this bit. You're saying there's, there, are, there are several pieces of land in my ward that as a result of the development of Harlow, Gilston Garden Town they will be. They could be subjected to compulsory purchases. Is that what you said? No. Oh well, what did you I say? There are several parcels of land that uh, need to be purchased, whether it's compulsory or by negotiation, um, we don't know yet. Um, and I couldn't say whether they're in your ward or not, but I'll send you a plan and you can see. Okay. Well, with respect, chair, it does actually say expected date of decisions, wards affected, and it says Little Pondon and Hare Street. So I'm actually quite surprised that the cabinet member can't answer a straightforward question of where in my ward is the idea that we're going to have to uh, compulsory buy. But uh, clearly I will, I'll will bow to um, yeah. his suggestion and I'll, I'll look forward to getting yeah, so to I, I think we need to, be, we need to speak the truth about these issues. And I think we need to be very careful about what we say that may not be correct. Um, as Councillor Harborough has said, there may be the need to use compulsory purchase orders. And I remember um, when compulsory purchase orders for the current bridge crossing came before your cabinet uh, last year. Uh, I think that you yourself made the, the comment um, that sometimes the use of compulsory purchase orders can take a period of time um, and that they need to be moved ahead of time in case a standard purchase does not work. I think if you'd like to ask very detailed questions like that, it is always, as you, uh, your previous administration has always said, to invite the uh, Portfolio holder if in advance to bring the map or bring the detail. Um, but I believe Councillor Harbour has said that he will share with you the details of the map in the area. Yeah, and in all fairness to you, Chair, I acknowledge that and, and, and welcome that. And I'm absolutely delighted that the legacy of quotes has been so well used. Great, thank you. Any other questions on the forward work plan? Councillor Edwards. If I may, and uh, uh, 10, 12, 7, 11, and this is about telling the truth, which is what you prefer. This is about the Harlow the Har and Gilston Town Transport Strategy. At the last cabinet meeting, I raised the question about the fact that the, uh, the sustainable uh, transport corridors and the, the proposals that were to be put forward were not in any way, or never were, proposals for there to be a monorail. I was then told by Councillor uh, Charles, if I remember rightly at the time, oh well, uh, you only have to look at the, uh, the, the, the pictures that there were and the people of Harlow want to know if it's a monorail, then of course it's a monorail. Well, I have gone away and with the officers, I have actually looked at the pictures. And in no way is there any picture on there which would suggest a monorail. In fact, they're all wheeled vehicles. Yes, Edwards, can I bring you to your question, please? So my question is, was there ever a proposal for there to be a monorail by a Harlow Council at any point? And so, and, so, um, and I suppose, so that, 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 that's firstly a question. What could you say? Let's, let's, let's go to the portfolio holders. It's very difficult for one administration to talk about the um, actions of the previous administration, but I think Councillor Charles and Councillor Sauls may wish to go in here. Yeah, very brief uh, right response because I uh, can't, can't speak to the previous administration and even the cash agenda when they were, um, but for, for some unknown reasons, I, mean, I wasn't. 
avid reader of the Harlow Labour Party website at site on Invite Councillor uh, Edwards to reflect on some of the articles that were posted on the uh, Harlow Labour Party website. He may uh, find the answer to, to his question. Uh, from my perspective, Councillor Edwards, I remember a um, very heated uh, scrutiny calling committee uh, talking about the details of the proposed transport system. Uh, and I certainly remember seeing the pictures of an elevated monorail in the local press. Um, what you choose to call it is up to you, but I can say this administration is certainly against the idea of the monorail. Any further questions? You know, with respect, I would like to come back and just remind ourselves of the Nolan Principles, and the Nolan Principle is about being honest. And I would argue that this, at the moment, that the council, the present council, is up being dishonest. You're continuing to perpetrate a myth, and the myth being that there was a monorail. There was never, ever a monorail. Well, thank God well, there never the is going to be a monorail. Can I ask you to ask your question, question, please? Rather than make a statement. This is the time for questions or for forward work. My question again is will the, will the, uh, the current councillors, the current children of administration, will they? Uh, Will they accept that there was never ever a proposal for there to be a monorail in this town? No, I won't accept that. I've seen the pictures that Councillor Hudson presented. Are there, are there any other questions on the forward work? We move on to the next item, the year end 2021 Finance and Performance Report. This is an officer report, and I believe the Chief Executive will be presenting it. Thank you, Chair. Uh, very briefly, actually. Uh, as you say, this is the year end for the finance and performance report. So the year end is obviously the 31st of March, which is why it is an officer report, so obviously the administration has changed. Um, so it seemed appropriate that we actually made the report. Um, I'll just draw you to a couple of highlights. Uh, the underspend was just £129,000, or 0.22% of the general fund budget. So I think that is quite impressive. And the, in relation to KPIs, council performed on or above target 46 out of 49 to 94%. Again, I think quite impressive. Uh, there are three recommendations in the report. Um, myself and other officers are here in the particularly on the finance. If any further questions. Thank you, Chair. I think we need to actually formally move the report to get on the uh, on the the table tonight and whilst it isn't this administration's uh, period of time we, we do owe it to people to get this on public record so um councillor parent i believe you want to move this but with a slight amendment thank you chair thank you i'm say it's my um i'd like to move a slight amendment to the recommendations under recommendation c1 I ask that recommendation C1 is deleted and the new recommendation D is added, which will state the following. The approval or carrying forward of £242,320 of budgets from the 2020 to 2021 to 2021-22 in respect to the general fund is set out in Appendix 3B to the report. is delegated to the Deputy to the Chief Executive, the Head of Finance and Property Service, in consultation with the Portfolio of Finance and Governance, the approval or otherwise to be determined by no later than 30th of July 2021. Um, I'm quite happy to elaborate as to why I've made that recommendation change, Chair. I, I, will just, I will just formally second you and note that we're moving A, B, C2, and the amended D. Um, Councillor Graham, can I speak first? Uh, just simply to say, Chair, that the uh, new administration is undergoing a budget review process as we um, set out in our party manifesto. All said heads of service um, and portfolio holders are aware of the, the budget review process under, undergoing at the moment. And it seems prudent that portfolio holders would have the opportunity to uh, ask heads of service about the carry forwards. And so following the budget review process, which is due to finish towards the end of July, the final decision on whether the carry forward will continue or not will be made at that point. So to allow better scrutiny by portfolio holders and their own areas. 
Uh, we're in constant contact uh, with both organisations, but obviously we've got to play almost by week to week. Uh, obviously we'd like them face to face, uh, but it depends on where we are with the figures at that particular time. But I would like to think they could be face to face, but I can't guarantee it. I think Brian um, Hassan-Vincent is obviously interested. Um, perhaps you could keep him up over there from the please keep me updated on those numbers. Hassan Vincent, do you have a second question? Um, I think Christian was on, on page 41, and um, there's been a, uh, there's a, there's a bit about support of people suffering domestic violence, which we know um, it is a huge issue and has been a, you know, an increased issue um, throughout uh, you know, this pandemic. And we also know, sadly, there's a connection with football as well in the increase in domestic violence, which is very, very disturbing and quite, you know, quite disgusting, frankly. Um, but it's great news that we've done work to support that. I just wonder if you can provide me offline if you haven't got it now, just, just to figure for the, the amount of people who support uh, Yeah, just very quickly, I believe it comes in page 40, but I just want to see, and I know you there as well, uh, Chair, uh, that the uh, Sheriff's Subcommittee is here, so I just want to formally you know, uh, pass my thanks to uh, the HGS for their support of, of, of our town and people in our town and throughout this crisis, uh, not only providing supplies, you know, hand sanitizer, space and social thing, but also even up their death by, um, to, uh, for, for testing and then I'm pleased to get into this. So I want to thank, uh, probably thank HGS, I'm sure you're following that, and uh, the initial school they gave this now. Now, so yes, indeed, both of us made exactly that point at the shareholders committee, and I know it was well received by HS, and we specifically asked for that thanks to be passed directly to the staff on the frame. Anyone else wish to say anything about this? In which case, uh, can I see if this is a group, please? Subject to the amendment. Agreed? Agreed. Very much. Uh, we now move on to item 10, the capital program outside report for 2021. Uh, and again, um, I think I'm looking at Mr. Freeman. Thank you, Chair. It's page 81, um, section 17, 
uh, table one, where it identifies a number of schemes, uh, revised building projects. I wonder if uh, Councillor Carter could confirm whether or not the list to house site uh, is uh, being maintained or has been um, slowed down to, to be stopped. Can I just ask that the number of units that were identified uh, from the 31st of March 2021 is 59. Is it my understanding that that number is going to be significantly reduced? To um, what? I don't have that figure with me, but uh, I can let uh, you know in Well, can you confirm it is going to be reduced from 59? No, I can't confirm that. Okay. That's the hint. Yeah, I don't know if similar on the same item actually, but can I also ask that we can, you know, I appreciate the comment that these figures now, but could we also have uh, an indication to see uh, what's going to happen in terms of, you know, the uh, percentage of uh, uh, social housing uh, on that side as well? I appreciate you more about that. I'll go back to you on that. Thank you, Nelson Jensen. Nelson, not. I see Nelson Swords in the indication. Um, on, on the same item uh, that was just been raised, um, why, why are the costs of those are you able to speak to this specifically with the, administ the former administration's policy? Or Council Uh No. Do you want to speak to this? No, I, 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 I obviously had no involvement when it came to dinner. Um, I've, I've certainly raised the cost of the property in the past. I remember well. Uh, perhaps the officer uh, involved at the time is able to help. I understand he may not be, but uh, Mr. Murray? Oh, hang on. It's free. Um, taken out of the harbour of Conway and sent to uh, Westminster, would the government, would, would, would the uh, new portfolio holder condemn this policy of the government of actually taking uh, money out of the harbour? Councillor yes, Dabber, there's a very tenuous link to the outturn for the last quarter of your previous administration. Well, but I, I, will, I will ask Councillor Parker what he has to say. Uh, uh, I'm not familiar with the uh, policy that uh, Councillor Dabber is referring to. Um, but uh, whilst we are from meandering back through, through history, uh, before the reform of the uh, housing uh, subsidy scheme, uh, this council was paying a third of its rent roll to the government. Uh, so for every pound that they received in rent, a third one of those. <laughs> uh, 
such as the community wellbeing, uh, isn't it fantastic that this council uh, was able to find the funding to yet again reinstate and make better Pets Corner, uh, which is a beacon uh, within the town park and is something that is cherished and loved uh, by the many. And also equally, uh, it's a congratulations at the commitment made to the community uh, to reinvest in the town-wide paddling pools, which will result in better services, safer services, and more affordable services, i.e. because they're free, to the uh, uh, wider community of Harlow. And then the final one, and these are just examples, uh, it is um, you know, with amazing gratitude uh, to uh, the staff and everybody about the huge success that we have achieved uh, through the development, design, implementation and success story around the enterprise zone. And I think sometimes we always look at the um, at short term negative comments, but actually which always seem to be in some way a bit pathetic, when actually what we should be looking at is the difference that we make as a council uh, to our community. So certainly within the contents of, of this report, uh, there's a lot of good news that I think we should be collectively uh, grateful for and to celebrate. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duff. Councillor Ben, I'll come to you in just a second. Um, if no one else has got anything, I'll, I'll say something for myself. Um, and say, yes, it, it, there are, is a lot to be welcomed, uh, as Councillor Duff has said. And I don't think any administration in its right mind of any group. Uh, would look to do down places like Pets Corner or the Paddling Pools. In fact, I remember one of the biggest meetings in recent history was when the previous administration um, tried to remove all the Paddling Pools and replace them with Splash Pools, oh, yeah, which, which, then caused, which, then, which then caused a massive scrutiny review, uh, which went with some both sides work, so I spent a lot of time taking evidence from people, looking at the benefits, and, and coming to the conclusion that um, actually Paddling and Paddling Pools was the way forwards. Uh, now. I look forward to them being used uh, as soon as possible once they're out of lockdown uh, and into the school summer holidays. Provided the weather, great British weather outside, um, holds. Uh, and indeed, Councillor Durkin mentions the um, enterprise zone. It, it, it seems a long time ago now, but I remember being on a call with the then Chief Executive Mountain Morley, Robert Halfway, our MP, um, and the then Chancellor of the Exchequer. Um, many, many years ago, when we were just getting the news through that we uh, had been awarded one of the enterprise zones, and it's a real benefit to the town now, both with jobs um, and um, with employability and, and improving the town generally, and, and you know, playing into that UK innovation program that makes Harlow such a great place to live and work and start a business and, and get a job. Um, but again, it was all down to the masses of government money. Uh, and I formally put on record that thanks to the government for that investment. Uh, Councillor Perry, you want to take them from the to Just really so I can point this chair, there is a lot to welcome and being the harvest the portfolio of the Legend of Regeneration um, project and the Enterprise Zone uh, back in the day. It was one of the proudest moments of my political career when we, when we heard that news and like, pay tribute to all the people that were involved in that, um, in that endeavour and that work everybody from the Member Parliament who got tirelessly um, in London for us to get that from the officers of the council, for the members of the West Essex Alliance, for the South East Local Enterprise Partnership and for the many businesses that engage with that, as well as the cross party support we received at the time for that. So I'm very, very pleased with um, with the regeneration and the enterprise zone and in themselves. I'd also like to just thank the officers for the combination of these reports very difficult to compile reports um, on behalf of other people. Um, and uh, as you've rightly said, Chair, and I must have this, this is a report of what happened when the Labour Administration, uh, 
Labour Party were in the administration, and so the officers had to put that together on their behalf. And so I thank them for their efforts here, and uh, I move the report for them to work out together. Thank you, Councillor Barrett. So, the Council Area Mayor Council Report 2021, is that agreed? Surprises and themes there that we should be um, identifying with, um, and shows the full year impact, unfortunately, of um, the pandemic and COVID 19. Um, it compares uh, Q4 to the Q3 report that was presented in January, and importantly, it aligns the budgetary and balance position with the performance position for key landlord activities. The recommendations uh, that you see in A to E quite large numbers, but they do show the impact of COVID-19, um, and they try to identify the outturn and the balance of the position, which will support activities uh, going forward. Some of the key headlines include the impact of um, the suspended housing capital program, and its impact on the community, and the large carry Forward going forward with the capital program that we should score the last report. But um, I'm quite pleased to report a better income position at Q4 than Q3. So good work there. Uh, it also identifies the, the challenges that were experienced by the council officers uh, during 2021 and going forward, because this is not a short-term issue, particularly around rental income, uh, homelessness, um, and the um, capital programme itself in terms of the delivery. Um, the balance of position, although large, will support the uh, key housing activities for 21-22. Um, and it also identified in there that housing services um, have identified three key recovery plans uh, going forward, which they will report throughout the year. These include tackling housing need, uh, recovering an income and service data collection, and important HCS and their recovery and capital repairs was reported to the shareholder subcommittee uh, last Thursday. Um, as you well know, um, officers did not present a housing um, account business plan uh, last year for obvious reasons, but it is expected for there to be a review of the HRA business plan later this year and for these risks that have been identified um, for outturn in Q4. Uh, to be uh, managed and mitigated to go with the challenges and opportunities. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, this does lead, despite being an officer of course, only to be proposed in the second year. Um, so, Councillor Calfer, I believe you're going to propose this group, and that's a very important to say. Thank you. Um, Councillor Calfer, do you want to do an introduction from your point of view? Uh, no, I'll have uh, a look at the end of my Okay. Are there any questions on the Housing revenue account, not so report. Doesn't look like there are. Is there anyone who'd like to say something in debate on the housing revenue account, not so report? Councillor Barrett, you're going to go first. Thank you, Chair. I, I, I think that Councillor Barrett is just quite disappointed that uh, there's well, no one's prepared to make any comments on the, uh, the housing revenue account, uh, given its size and importance to not only to the council but also to, to the town. Uh, the council still owns around a third of all properties in the town. Um, uh, we have a major uh, investment program. It's, it's, it's a little bit complex with the HRA uh, and the capital program. You know, there's sort all of crossover between the two. Uh, but uh, you know, you know, there is a very healthy uh, investment program there. Um, unfortunately, due to the impact of uh, COVID, we've not been able to, or we, the council, have not been able to progress uh, the investment as we would like. Um, but this is all now being 
uh, reprioritised, rearranged uh, along with each of us, how they contracted. Um, Mr. Murray has, all, uh, has already referred to uh, a number of the uh, key features, one of which is the, uh, uh, the rent uh, collection. Now, despite all the problems of last year, just, uh, <coughs> despite all the problems of people losing their jobs, going on to furlough schemes, switching on to uh, universal credit, we actually, people saying we, we the council, uh, achieved 98.69% uh, recovery of the, of the rent roll for last year, uh, which I think everyone would agree is no mean achievement, um, but we can always do better. Um, Another uh, unfortunate impact of the, um, uh, the, of the virus is the impact on homeless and uh, rough sleepers. Because of the work that the council has been doing with its uh, organisation for the two streets of homes over the years, uh, it has built up a very good reputation with the Ministry of Communities, Housing and Local Government, which is where around here, uh, in terms of receiving grants. Um, and we are able to, we uh, are able to uh, invest that money in providing services, in getting people uh, off the street and into homes um, for both, well, both the rough sleepers and also the homeless, which are our two separate, uh, two separate categories. Uh, so what I'd uh, like to end up by saying is to, uh, a big thank you to the housing staff for all the work that they've been doing over the last 12 months coping with, the, uh, with their own uh, uprooting and uh, working from home and working remotely and also continuing to uh, contact and support our uh, tenants and homeless people. Thank you, Councillor Pat. Um, is the housing revenue account outside of the board going to take one? It is really at this time um, approved. Really approved. Really approved. Really Thank you. Uh, we now move to item 12, which is the first of the four quarters by portfolio holders tonight. Um, and we look at the renewal of article four directions. Can I turn to Councillor Hardware to introduce and move the item? Thank you, Chair. Um, considering uh, Article 4 and uh, PD rights has been uh, a topic of much discussion, especially from the previous administration. I was very surprised to see that the renewal of our Article 4 directions was not on the forward um, work plan. I've put it on there uh, because it takes a full year to get a renewal in place. Um, these expire, well, the existing Article 4 expires next July, so we need to start this month uh, with the process. And it's going to be slightly complicated because uh, there are different, now different classes of buildings that need to be included. And we need to uh, uh, protect all of our commercial areas. And then in addition, uh, retail in the uh, town centre needs to be protected. So this is uh, the um, renewal process, or the renewal process of the Article 4 directions, um, which will start as soon as it's approved. Thank you. And are you formally moving that? Yes, I'm formally moving that. And can I see a second there? Second the thoughts. Um, first of all, would anyone like to ask uh, any questions on the report to us? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. In relation to the recommendations, the title of the uh, Cabinet report is Renewal of Article 5, but actually the recommendations are about approval in principle new articles, uh, both in A and B. So I'm not sure why are we saying that this is a renewal when actually what we're trying to do is actually extend and put new uh, applications in place, or am I reading it wrong? Well, I think for some it's Article 4 directives, not Article 5. Did I say 5? You, you did indeed, Councillor. Uh, um, but if I can add it, it's the hardware to answer the question. As I explained, um, this is the renewal of existing Article 4 directives, but it's complicated by the fact that there are new classes of buildings to be included, but it's also a new Article 4 direction for the, to protect the retail um, buildings in the town centre, which were previously covered. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I, I understand exactly what the Cabinet Member said, and I'm sorry if I said five rather than, than four, but surely the report should actually reflect that this is actually about new, not just renewal. 
I think the report does reflect that now. <laughs> so, you know, I think you're rather specific there. Um, the portfolio model may have a bit of a further view. No? Any other questions? No? In which case we move to the debate. Would anyone like to say anything about the answer for the reference? Councillor Dover. Sorry, I just would, I would just like to say that these should be broadly welcomed by uh, everybody. Uh, this was an initiative that was introduced several years ago due to the concerns that was actually happening in relation to officers being changed into horrendous short-term housing areas. And whilst we still have the issues around Terminus House and others, uh, this Article 4 that was first introduced was welcomed across the floor uh, by all particular ones. So I'm absolutely pleased that not only are we renewing it, but actually we're extending it and we're also putting new Article 4s in place. So I'm sure the uh, report would be welcomed by your party. Councillor Vince? Yeah, you can start working on funding again then. Yeah, but I did want to just, just pay for TV to Councillor Danny Burton, who obviously was um, very much a, 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 a big figure in pushing this direction forward. Um, this up four direction forward in the first place, and I know he's not here, but I'm sure he'll be pleased to know that, and, and I'm hoping that you will all agree with him that it's the right thing to do. But yeah, as I say, we also work that. Anyone else like to speak? Councillor Dover. Yeah, I'm just going to welcome the uh, support from the, the opposition on this, uh, and my report referred to uh, what Councillor Harbour said, given their support, it was interesting to see that they didn't put on their full work plan. Uh, when the administration, of course, might have been so it would have expired. Um, but, you know, they, they had the powers to stop this to begin with and, and, and never used them, and of course, they never opposed it. Uh, when it came through Parliament as a statutory instrument in 2013, uh, but I, I appreciate the fact that now takes the party that better work than ever. Thank you, Councillor Lawson. Anyone else? In which case, Councillor Harbour, would you like to sum us up, please? Yeah, as I explained, this is the uh, renewal of the existing slight amendments to the existing and uh, introduction of new Article 4 directions. Uh, Short and sweet. Absolutely, that's an excellent. Um, in which case, uh, can I ask if the um, report on the renewal of Article 4 directions is agreed? Agreed. Thank you Thanks very much. Uh, we go back to Councillor Hardway now for item 13, the Harlow Design Guide approval for consultation. Councillor Hardway. Yes, the uh, Harlow uh, Design Guide is uh, 10 years old and uh, needs to be updated uh, to reflect our new local plan. Um, the Harlow and uh, Gilston Garden Town Sustainability Checklist <coughs> and a couple of regulations. So this is basically an interim uh, update um, pending a full review of the design guide uh, next year. Uh, but this addendum uh, is in five sections. Uh, the first one covering uh, tall buildings, second section on privacy and overlooking because we do have quite a lot of applications uh, in and coming on tall buildings in the town centre. Uh, there's also a section three on amenity space and gardens Section 4, updated householder guidance, and Section 5, uh, climate change. Um, so this is an interim pending a, uh, a full review next year. Are you full and I'm full and moving, sorry. And secondly, is that right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. sort of. Um, we'll go to questions. Uh, questions on the floor, first of all? Councillor Dirk. Thank you, Chair. Uh, in relation to page 110, uh, section E, uh, which is section 5, climate change, I'm just wondering what assurances can we, and also the gentleman who asked the question um, this evening, uh, what um, reassurances can we give in relation to sustainable design, construction, and energy use? in relation to our limited involvement with the stork crossing. Okay, interesting question, that's a lot of um, Because this hasn't been consulted or adopted, uh, this will have nothing, no one can on the current application. So, Councillor Hardwick, can I follow that up? Would that mean that the, um, 
the application of Thompson Force would have to rely on the previous design guide that was passed 10 years ago and hasn't been amended since. That's correct, yes. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Uh, I'll move to comments then and discussion. Can I, can I open that, please? Um, I'd like to say how welcome it is that we are renewing this, renewing the design guide, because I do think it's important, if, if not only for some of the comments that Councillor Durkin has made there, that things do happen, things do creep up, and if you don't keep these documents up to date, um, the, the, the document can suffer. I'm really pleased that there is a section of climate change in there, and that we are talking about construction and uh, sustainable energy usage, sustainable design. Um, I think it's an important document tonight, and I think there's a lot of work clearly has gone in under the surface here from our officers, so thank you for that. Um, and I also note, as it says in the report, that it should be read alongside the HGGT sustainability guidance and checklist, which we discussed at the previous cabinet meeting. And I remember the debate on that, where that was uh, supported cross party, particularly because it went further than government, government guidelines and asked for developers to do more than the, the minimum to go that step further and try and really push the quality and the sustainability of the buildings. Um, and Councillor Hardware, can I also thank the fact that in there you've included um, that this won't be just a standard consultation for four weeks that we would normally do as a council, um, but in six weeks to cover the fact that the COVID is still ongoing and we're entering the summer holiday period. So we want to make sure that this is as widely consulted on as, as possible, and I thank you for bringing that as part of the report. Does anyone else wish to speak? Councillor Hardware, over to you to wrap up then. Yes, thank you, Chair, for uh, taking uh, something up away from me. <laughs> but um, yes, as, as, as the uh, summer holidays are coming up and the COVID restrictions, uh, this is going to be a six week consultation instead of the required four to give everybody the opportunity to, to give their views. Thank you. In which case, can I see the uh, design guide has been approved by this cabinet? Approved, approved. We now move on to the next item, which is the Cabinet Policy Development Working Group Work Plan. Uh, and I believe we have to agree this. Can I just say that it has been set in consultation, in consultation with the chair of um, that group, but she reassures me that when that group meets in early August, the group will also have the chance um, to flag any other areas of work. But I think there's quite a comprehensive work plan already picking up some of the very interesting parts of the Cabinet's uh, plan going forward. Um, particularly interested to hear wider member involvement through that group on the update of the carbon management plan, electric vehicle installing points, and of course, transport and climate change strategies. So, um, but there's a lot there for the uh, urban working group to get their teeth into. Uh, I know in uh, previous years, that working group hasn't operated quite as I think all councillors would have liked. Um, it hasn't met as often as I think it should and I'm really keen to see a very productive work plan there. Are there any questions on the work plan? Councillor Edwards. Uh, just a uh, um, request, really. Um, I welcome the, you know, if you welcome the, the fact that this now looks to be a, an active committee, which is good. Uh, just to see where you going forward. When we come to the discussion next year of this, what, what should be on that, and what should go to scrutiny, um, and this is nothing to do with you personally, this is to do with whoever is the chair of the committee at the time. I think it would be very useful if there could be a discussion um, prior to the, the work plan proposal being made, a discussion between whoever is chair of scrutiny and the chair of the, uh, the, uh, of the working committee, just so that we can have a, 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 what's the word? a, a look at what, what goes where almost um, prior to it necessarily coming to the committee, if that's at all possible. I would encourage that sort of conversation between the Chair and Vice Chair of both of those committees, um, yeah. and happy to support and help facilitate that. Thanks, thank Councillor Dirk, a question from you? Yes, please, uh, Chair. I note the report and I welcome the report, and I notice that uh, some of the items are going to be spread over the whole uh, period of time but some have only got one reporting mechanism and it's a bit like electric vehicle charging points, open space and health and well-being. Um, I was just wondering if you could just explain 
Um, are they just simply going to be receiving a report for recommendation or is there going to be action following this? And if so, why hasn't that been uh, uh, put into the forward plan of, of this working group? I'm not the chair of the working group, no, um, and, she's chair of the and, and she's not here. However, I know that she intends to run the group um, in a similar way to scrutiny, but using pre-scrutiny, um, and um, to ensure that members of both sides, backbenchers of both sides, are happy with what is coming before the cabinet, have a chance to feed into reports that are coming before the cabinet, has a chance to exercise that pre-scrutiny. Um, but I think Thursday the 5th of August is the point where I don't want to constrain the backbenchers of both sides, but I think that's where that debate really needs to be had. I don't think it's appropriate for any cabinet to um, constrain the people that look at their work plan to constrain any form of scrutiny. Uh, and I'll be happy to see what comes back from that committee from the backbenchers of both sides. Uh, Chair, just to clarify, my question was not about constraining a, a committee made up, it was just simply asking a question that some seem to have regular updates on the agenda, where others just seem to be a one-off, and that was all I was asking the question about. I'll, I'll pass the question on to the Chair and ask the Thank you. Are there any other questions? Do we need to have a debate on the, the work plan, I don't think. Has anyone indicated? In which case, can we see if that's agreed? Agreed, agreed, agreed. Thank you. We move to the next item, um, which is the communications from committees, working groups, parties, and panels. Because uh, none of them have met yet in the cycle properly, we have no reports to come back at this stage. Uh, the minutes of panels and working groups, again, we have none to report back to Cabinet at this stage. And item 17, Matters of Urgent Business, I've not been uh, notified of any. I've seen anyone is in the hand. In which case, can I thank you all, public and councillors and officers, for attendance tonight, and wish you a safe journey home. Thank you.